Sutra. Ananda said to the Buddha, Well, honored one, I also have heard the Buddha discuss true appearance with Manjushri and the other disciples of the Dharma king. The world honored one also said, The mind is not inside and it is not outside. Commentary Ananda again uses the Buddha's words as a basis for his argument to prove that his own opinion is valid. Ananda said to the Buddha, World honored one, I also have heard the Buddha discuss true appearance with Manjushri and the other disciples of the Dharma king. This is how you explained it, Buddha. It's not something I made up. You said it that way. As soon as he opens his mouth, he tries to justify himself by turning the Buddha's words to his own use. Ananda has a lot of nerve. Manjushri is a wonderfully auspicious Bodhisattva, also called wonderful virtual Bodhisattva. The other disciples of the Dharma king include Kuan Yin Bodhisattva, the Bodhisattva who regards the sounds of the world, Mahasthamabrata Bodhisattva, the Bodhisattva of great strength, and other great Bodhisattvas. The Buddha is the Dharma king, and Bodhisattva are his disciples. What is meant by true appearance? True appearance has no appearance. There isn't anything at all that is true appearance, and yet there is nothing which has no appearance. You say there isn't anything at all, but at the same time, there is everything. Everything is produced from within true appearance. There is nothing which does not come forth from within it. We speak of true emptiness, of wonderful existence, and of true suchness. This also refers to true appearance. Within true appearance is wonderful existence. In wonderful existence is true emptiness. So it is said that true emptiness does not obstruct wonderful existence, and wonderful existence does not obstruct true emptiness. At the ultimate point of emptiness, there is existence. At the ultimate point of existence, there is nothing at all. The world or not one also said, the mind is not inside and is not outside. Buddha, this is just what you've said. If I repeat it, how can you say it is wrong? Is what Ananda is implying. Sutra, as I now consider it, if it were within, it would see things it does not see. If it were outside, there would be no common perception. Since it cannot see inside, it cannot be inside. And since the body and mind have a common perception, it does not make sense to say it is outside. Therefore, since there is a common perception, and since there is no seeing within, it must be in the middle. Commentary, as I now consider it, I am thinking it over again. If it were within, it would see things it does not see. Saying the mind is within the body would imply that we could see within the body. If it were outside, there would be no common perception. The Buddha has just demonstrated that if the mind were outside the body, the mind and body could not have the kind of common perception that they do have. Since it cannot see inside, it cannot be inside. Since the mind does not know what is inside the body, it won't work to say that it is located inside. And since the body and mind have common perception, it does not make sense to say it is outside. Our bodies and minds share knowledge of one another, as the Buddha just explained when he pointed out that Ananda experiences a common perception when his eyes see the Buddha's hand and his mind distinguishes it. If the mind were outside the body, there would be no common perception, so it can't be outside. Therefore, since there is a common perception and since there is no seeing within, now that I understand this, I realize that it must be in the middle. Ananda now decides that the mind is in the middle. Precisely where this middle is, he doesn't say. Is it in the middle of the body or in the middle outside the body? That is how the Buddha proceeds to question him. 
Sutra, the Buddha said, You say it is in the middle, that middle must not be haphazard or without a fixed location. Where is this middle that you propose? Is it in an external place or is it in the body? Commentary, the Buddha said, You say it is in the middle, that middle must not be haphazard or without a fixed location. This middle of yours has to be somewhere. There has to be some sense and certainty about it. Therefore, where is this middle that you propose? Consider that question. The Buddha presses the point. Is it in an external place or is it in the body? Is your middle someplace outside or it is in your body? Sutra, if it were in the body, it could not be on the surface of the body since that is not the middle. But to be in the middle is no different than being inside. If it were in an external place, would there be some evidence of it or not? If there were no evidence of it, that would be the same as if it did not exist. If there were evidence of it, then it would have no fixed location. Commentary, if it were in the body, it could not be on the surface of the body since that is not the middle. But to be in the middle is no different than being inside. Supposing this middle, you say the mind, is located in, is in the body. Is it on the surface of the body, but then it isn't in the middle. Isn't it in the middle of the body? But that is to say the mind is inside the body and we've already rejected that as impossible. If it were in an external place, would there be some evidence of it or not? If you say that the middle is somewhere else, can you point out where it is? Is there something about it that allows us to discern it? If there were no evidence of it, that would be the same as if it did not exist. If there is nothing to indicate its presence, if you can't point to it as being in a certain place, then it does not exist. You still haven't shown me a middle. If there were evidence of it, then it would have no fixed location. Why does the Buddha say this? Sutra, why? Suppose that someone were to indicate the middle by a marker. When regarded from the east, it would be to the west, and when regarded from the south, it would be to the north. The marker is unclear, and the mind would be equally chaotic. Commentary, why suppose that someone were to indicate the middle by a marker? Someone piles a sign in the ground reading, this place is the middle. When regarded from the east, it would be to the west, and when regarded from the south, it would be to the north. Your sign may say middle, but if you stand to the east of it, the sign is west to you, is west of you. How is this the middle? Then you might stand to the south of it, now it is to the north of you. This is also not the middle. Basically, as I said earlier, the ten directions do not exist. You might say that something is south of you, but if you go south of it, it becomes north. You could then say it is north, but if you go north of that north, it becomes south again. So which is it? There is nothing fixed about it. The principle is the same here. The 